Hello friends, in this lesson we shall learn about the various factors that govern the resistivity of any conductor. Have you observed the yellow electric bulb closely? The filament in an electric bulb is very thin. The filament in the bulb is in form of a coil, not a straight line, because that way longer threads can be used for the filament. And the tungsten is used as a filament. Do you know why? Or do you know why mostly wires in electrical wiring are made up of copper? Or why rubber gloves and sleepers are used by electricians when doing the electrical work? There are some factors affecting the resistance of a conductor. So the resistance of the conductor depends upon its length, area of its cross section and the nature of its material. Resistance of a uniform metallic conductor is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to the area of its cross section. That is resistance R is directly proportional to the length of the conductor L and inversely proportional to the cross section area A of the conductor. If we combine these two we get R is proportional to L by A. We bring a constant rho, it's like a small p, to make it an equation. So resistance R is equal to rho multiplied by length divided by area. So here rho is the constant of proportionality and is called electrical resistivity of the material of the conductor. We know the SI unit of resistance is ohm denoted by the Greek alphabet and resistivity rho is equal to R into A by L. So if you put the units of resistance as ohm, area as square meters and length as meter, we get unit of rho as ohm multiplied by meter square by meter. So that le leads to ohm meter. So ohm meter is a unit of resistivity rho. So materials with low resistivity are good conductors. So if you take two wires of same length and cross section, in that case resistance R will be lower for the wire made up of material with low electrical resistivity. That is lower value of rho. Isn't it? Copper has very low resistivity 1.62 into 10 to the power minus 8. Hence it gives lower resistance. Hence, it's an excellent conductor. Low resistance means very good conductor. Very less resistance is offered to the electric current. And hence, copper is commonly used in electrical wires. Silver has lower resistivity than copper, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 8, which is better than copper. So it's a better conductor, but it is costly too. Tungsten has resistivity of 5.2 into 10 to the power minus 8, so more than copper. So it is also a conductor but has more resistance and hence produces more heat. Hence it is used in filaments in electric bulbs. And its filament is thin and in spiral form, so longer means more length and thinner wire means less cross section area, so it has more resistance and hence more heat and more heat means more light it emits. Insulators are the materials which have very very high resistivity that is they offer maximum resistance to the current flow that is it doesn't allow electric current to flow like glass has 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 14 resistivity hence it does not conduct electricity remember it is 10 to the power positive 10 same way rubber has 10 to the power 13 to 10 to the power 16 resistivity. Hence it does not conduct electricity and used as coating in electric wires and gloves used by electricians so that current doesn't go through them. Even diamond has very good resistivity 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 13 but it is very costly too. So the factors affecting the resistance of a conductor are length, 
area of its cross section and nature of its material which is the resistivity of the material higher the resistivity rho or longer the conductor or lesser cross section area of the conductor all three increases the resistance of the conductor that's all for now bye bye